maybe in 2024 we can do a like, cross event together. But uh, us aside, Tibor Neth, Patrick, you wanted to talk about this extension, talking about the Wonder Kids getting a long extension, Beetle Trek, and uh, yeah, how big is it? Until 2026, because we were doing our Lidl Trek preview, and then literally like two days after this was announced. Because during the video, I was saying, it's kind of criminal that Lidl Trek haven't got this guy signed up for a longer period of time. Because I also remember a few weeks back, or it might have been last week, we were talking about Jonas and the World Championships. And I said that there seems to be a lack of pure punchers in the peloton. But could Thibaut Nath be this pure puncher that has sort of faded away? Like what Alaphilippe has been in the past, for example. Or like Valverde, Dan Martin like Liège that kind of vibe because I feel like at the moment the puncher the pure puncher is sort of like a a dying art in the same way that a pure time trialist is a dying art where people are just sort of mixing between being able to do puncher plus something else Pagacha for example so now I just wanted to kind of discuss Thibaut Nace he's in like 2021 and sort of what we think he might be capable of in the future because I see him as like a Ardennes classic kind of guy but I'm intrigued to see what you guys might think. I agree in terms of his rider profile. I think we, we saw this year that this, there was a stage of the Tour of Norway in particular where I think we really saw him demonstrate that explosive kick he has. I know that uh, that field wasn't necessarily the strongest, uh, but you did have world tour riders who were there. And I think he, he demonstrates a bit of a sort of uh, a wild flair about him that will be very interesting to see on the road. He's only been riding with Lidl Track since the sort of first of August, so only a couple of months now. But uh, he's looking super promising for the new year, new year with already two professional victories under his belt. I mean, he is this, this multidisciplined rider. I think maybe as well with, with sort of that family name behind him, he has the potential to really be a sort of a Galactico in the Spring Classics. I don't know if he can be like a sort of an all-round Galactico, like, like with Van der Poel and Van Aan and so forth, but definitely in like a sort of flesh wallon kind of finish, I could definitely see Thibaut Nace trying to sort of spring away um, as long as it doesn't cloud his sort of ambitions with GC and all the, all these different kind of things. I, I think Thibaut Nace could be quite the interesting figure in the professional peloton. And I don't think he, he's just a flash in the pan like we've seen with plenty of other riders, particularly in sort of the COVID period of 2020 through to 2021 where we saw lots of these younger guys we thought maybe they have glim glimpses of being a great puncher like now even save it and so forth who sort of maybe faded away i think that Thibaut nace has really sort of given us a good sort of sense of who he is who he could be as a rider and you cannot look past that gene pool that he's from you know his father if you don't know sven nace one of the best cyclocross riders of all time it really is sort of it, it, it's fitting that uh that he's making a big splash as a youngster among the likes in cyclocross and probably in the road next year but his dad never actually, well, like you said, legend of the sport, world champion, etc. But he never actually did well on the road, which I found really strange. But that was in that period bef before like, when cyclocross riders didn't do road. I guess, like... You look at now, though. Like, we've got Lawrence Sweet, Ile Isabel, all these guys who, on their day, can potentially beat a Pitcock and definitely mm -hmm. top three. But none of them have, like, anything on the road. It's so bizarre. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. Like even like Lars Van der Haar has been around for like he had a world world tour contract for a couple of years with what is now known as Team DSM, but he never really did anything on the road. He's still, I mean, Sven Nays is he's still a legend of the sport. And Thibaut has, has shown in terms of his road ability that his road ability is good enough to be right up there. You know, a guy who finishes third place at the Tour of Norway and GC and wins a pretty convincing, punchy stage there in strong form as well as a European Championship victory in the under 23 category beating the likes of Juan Ayuso for instance and Pip Ozana I think really shows that he is quite the star in the making and Lidl Trek is a really interesting team for him to go to you don't really have a classic star at the moment and these punchy kind of finishes they have a lot of solid guys but no real star I would say Elmo also Elmo also was second in Flesh for Long oh okay okay but like it's it's not like he's battling against a sort of a Pogaccia or a Roglic or so forth. He has the opportunity to really like lead some of these uh, some of these punchier races next year. Yeah. Typically, if Skelmos is going more for GC as well. Yeah, definitely. He's just like so suited to like a, an Amstel Gold and a Liège and stuff. I just, I'm, I think also that's why I'm so excited about it is because 
It feels like every year there's sort of somebody who comes through who's a bit of a surprise act, a bit like Ben Healy this year was a bit of a surprise act in the Ardennes. And I just think, well, you know, if Thibaut Nace is given his opportunity, I know he is still very young, but I think that's just kind of like the era of it we're in, where you all kind of just expect people to be kind of flying by the time they're like 21, gone of the era of like the early 2010s. You were only given the opportunity of leadership past the age of 25. I mean, I'm not expecting him to do like a grand tour next year. But I think just a little bit of an expansion, considering the small flash of a pan that we were given this year and the kind of like no, Arc Race of Norway, also, I think there's like Barwell's Belgium tour as well. He did really good. Or it might have been Wallonie. I can't remember, but it was, it, was, it was one of the two. And I just think from that small flash of a pan, I was like, oh, you know, this guy's, I, I think that he's like the real, maybe like next Arden star in the making. And I'm just super excited to see somebody so specialist because I don't think he's very good at like time trialing or i don't think he's got gc aspirations so he's very much just like a one day pure specialist and in an era of ever crossing of disciplines i think that it's quite cool to see somebody so specialized yeah it's actually quite refreshing to see one of these wonder kids come up who's not like amazing at everything he is sort of like we don't have questions of could he be a gc rider could he be a time trialist could he be a sprinter it's like it was, it was very much like we kind of know what we're going to get with him and even just like looking at Lidl track for the next couple of years, they've got a couple of really strong engines here. I mean, you mentioned Skelemosa, he's still 23, let's not forget. Quinn Simmons, who's 22. Matthias Vatsek, the current Czech road race champion, a good puncher as well. Good form, I believe, at Tour of Wallonia, maybe Tour of Belgium, one or the other. He's 21 years of age. These are all guys that could be like a really interesting sort of spring classic squad. Anti Bonace, of course, in the years to come um, for for Lidl Trek, who are really starting to look sort of more long-term with their strategy, especially after securing that Lidl um, name for the team. I just hope they change their jersey for next year. You know, I really don't want Thibaut Nace winning in this kit. It's, it's so awful. Sorry to dampen the mood. Ouch. At least it's better than DSM's. Oh, that's true. <laughs> However, apparently, I mean, we actually did get, get to talk about this the other week. DSM, now DSM post-NL. Oh, sorry, DSM Feminic post NL rolls off the tongue. Apparently, the jersey that they launched was, was, was a temporary jersey. It could still change. Let's hope so. Because <laughs> we can only hope. I think the everyone was like begging, begging for the change though. But I mean, yeah, Patrick, you said Ness did well at uh, one of the Belgian races, particularly in the Belgian tour stage four. Winner, Macho van der Poel on a punchy stage. Second place, Thibaut Ness. Yeah, I just can't wait. I, I expect that, yeah, he'll just take a bit of a step up from what, have a bit more of a full road season next year. But then I can't wait for him to, you know, just flesh out into this puncher star that we're all i think craving maybe a little bit in the kind of kind of nostalgic years of ala philippe gone by i think we're all looking for somebody a bit like that but anyway Jan, you had a story you wanted to talk about about your favorite danish rider yeah um this is in connection with jonas vinigal he had like quite a sort of interesting sit down interview with uh extra blood or extra blood that's as i would say where they uh where jonas spoke about his past and spoke about doping in, in, in cycling. He actually confessed to missing a doping test back in 2019. 